UK share values rise and bond yields fall as investors become more confident in a Bank of England rate cut this Thursday. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Thomas Warner. The FTSE 100 and the domestic-focused FTSE 250 both made positive starts to the week, riding a wave of positive sentiment that started on Wall Street last Friday. But a fall in two-year gilt yields to a 14-month low suggests there's more to Monday's UK market moves. Could the Bank of England be about to cut interest rates for the first time in more than four years? With us to give us his take is James Smith, developed markets economist at ING. James, a very warm welcome to you. You wrote an article last week saying that you expect a 6-3 vote in favour of a 25 basis point cut at this Thursday's meeting. According to our numbers, the chances of a cut are up to 58% from virtually 50-50 in the middle of the month. What's behind this increase in confidence? Well, I think we've seen a bit of a move globally towards pricing more interest rate cuts. So that probably tells part of the story. But I think fundamentally, it's still a pretty close call, at least in the minds of investors. The problem is we know that the decision is going to come down to sort of three, four, five committee members uh, at the Bank of England who we've not really heard much from recently. It's hard to know what they make of the recent data because the recent data on services inflation in particular has not been particularly helpful. It's been coming in higher than the Bank of England's forecasts. We don't really know what those committee members make of all of that, which I think is why people are finding it very hard to have a strong conviction call. I still think it'll be a rate cut, but it is a pretty difficult one to call at this point. It certainly is. Let's imagine that it does turn out to be another hold. What do you think the impact would be? Well, I think it would just add to uh, sterling strength. I mean, it's worth saying that uh, when we look at what's priced, markets haven't been pricing a huge amount in terms of the Bank of England this year, as we were just discussing, pretty much 50-50 for this meeting. There's not a huge amount priced in total this year, about two rate cuts. So I think it would be the bigger market mover potentially is if they do cut and we do get more sort of indication of of rate cuts coming later this year. Yeah, potentially we get a bit of a a return higher in in yields, a bit of a stronger sterling. But yeah, I think more of the action is if they do deliver that cut. So James, if you were forced to choose, do you think it would be a cut or no cut this week? I think it would be a cut. Personally, when I look at the recent rise or not so much rise actually, but just upside surprise to services inflation. I think a lot of that is just noise. A lot of it's to do with uh, price increases at the start of the financial year. Um, And there's some other bits and pieces going on as well. I think fundamentally the news is still getting a lot better. Price pressures are cooling. Rate cuts take quite a long time to come through these days as well, right? You know, lots of people on fixed rate products, uh, be it mortgages uh, or other types of loans, going to take time for them to work. So it does look like the economy is, is, is coming under a bit of pressure, at least if you look at the jobs market. So I think now is the time to start bringing rates uh, a little bit lower. Well, ahead of that Bank of England meeting, James, we do have the Federal Reserve's policy meeting that is due to wrap up on Wednesday. You say in your notes that you expect a hold this week and then cuts in September, November and December with at least three more next year. Are you not in danger of making the same mistake that many people were making heading into this calendar year? Possibly, but the news looking at inflation in the US is getting better. It was not good in the first quarter of this year, but the last few prints we have out of the US on inflation have been going in the right direction. But there's another dimension now as well, and that's the jobs market. The jobs market is coming under pressure. The unemployment rate is gradually creeping higher in the US. And crucially, it's something that Fed officials seem to be paying more and more attention to. We're hearing lots of Fed officials over the last couple of weeks, ex-Fed officials as well, getting quite vocal about the fact that Maybe the jobs market is uh, heading in the wrong direction. And again, I think there's an an acknowledgement, even an explicit acknowledgement from Fed officials. If the unemployment rate is rising, uh, you know, starts rising more quickly, then maybe it's too late to cut rates. So I think we are getting to the point where, you know, that rate cut is coming not this week, but September is looking more and more likely. And I think it will be followed by more later this year. And James, we know that central banks around the world keep a very close eye on what the Fed does. With that in mind, would you expect to see a bit of a domino effect from this week's decision around the uh, other global markets? Potentially, yeah. I mean, actually, the Fed is actually uh, you know, running a bit late, as is the Bank of England. We've had lots of rate cuts from the likes of the ECB, you know, the Swiss, the Swedes have already been cutting rates. So if anything, the Fed has been lagging what's been going on elsewhere. But uh, yeah, I think this is a global move lower. Uh, in interest rates um, over the next few months. Just finally, James, it is earnings season, obviously. Microsoft, Apple and Amazon all due this week. And we saw today that McDonald's posted a surprise drop in quarterly sales. What are you expecting to learn about the economy from the performance of these massive bellwether companies? 
Well, I suppose the tech sector is kind of out in its own orbit at the moment, right, in terms of uh, the the stuff that really matters there. But in terms of the stuff that's really intrinsically linked to the U.S. economy, I think it comes back to the consumer. The U.S. consumer has been really strong over the last 12 to 18 months or so, but there are signs of stress emerging. You look at loan delinquencies, for example, uh, credit card delinquencies in the U.S., they're rising quite quickly. So there is that strain coming through. We have heard this from some companies already. So I think for me, that's the key thing, because I think that is another key thing that the Fed is watching. Again, it feeds back into that narrative that maybe interest rates need to come lower. James Smith, Developed Markets Economist at ING. Many thanks for your thoughts. And that is Market Insight. Don't forget you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.